Hello and welcome to News Click. As the country celebrates the 73rd year of India becoming a republic, we have with us a special guest, Mr. Harsh Mandar, who needs very little introduction. He's an activist, he's a human rights activist. He started the Karwai Mohabbat and he runs the Center for Equity Studies in Delhi. Uh, let's go over to our guest. Welcome to our show, uh, Mr. Mandar. Mr. Mandar, can we begin with the Republic Day, uh, in a sense, the parade and the entire ceremony which we are going to have on the 26th? Uh, LCC from Egypt is our uh, country's chosen guest. What do you What do you think it says about the the Indian Republic, our guest? You know, I think that uh, the Indian Republic is passing through its most difficult period in the last 75 years, um, and I even include the emergency, which was another time when the constitution was held in abeyance. Um, this is a time where, uh, where our freedoms are being, uh, you know, uh, truncated day after day after day, the spaces for dissent. Um, and, uh, and there are other problems as well. But uh, in the context of inviting a dictator who's uh, sort of infamous for having jailed uh, uh, artists, writers, uh, uh, people, political dissenters for years um, uh, with no trial. Right. Uh, um, it's you know it, it's it's a sad reflection. Uh, it's almost ironical because it almost is where we are reaching in this republic now, uh, where we are seeing uh, some of our best hearts and minds uh, being locked up um, for years without even a trial starting. Um, so, uh, so the selection is unfortunate, but also strangely sort of in conformity with where our, where our country is going, where our republic is going. What do you see as the threats to the Republic. You see this, this conversation all the time about threats from outside, threats from within. And, and you know, the very militaristic way in which we organize this particular day. What are the threats? See, I think uh, uh, the Constitution um, really came out of a freedom struggle uh, led by Mahatma Gandhi and the Constitution uh, led by Dr. Ambedkar. Central to it was the idea that we would be a, a, a kind, humane, equal, just country right. uh, in which it would not matter which God you worship or if you worship no God. It would not matter what your caste, your religion, your gender, your wealth. You would be an equal citizen of this country in every way. That was the central promise of our constitution. and. Uh, we're passing through a time now when it, it would be, it's terrifying to be a minority, particularly a Muslim minority. Um, we're seeing each, you know, through the last eight years, we're seeing, uh, you know, um, the political marginalization of uh, 200 million people. Uh, uh, you have a ruling party which is proud of the fact that it does not have a single Muslim MP in, in the Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, or an MLA in any assembly across the country. Um, so there's a political marginalization, there's a social uh, sort of climate of hatred through runaway hate speech and lynching and, and hate attacks. But after 2019, I'm also seeing, you know, a straightforward, the state is clearly at war with its Muslim citizens. Uh, you know, the bulldozer is in a sense a symbol of this. We, we can do, you know, so bulldozer means that I don't care about the constitution. I don't c care about the rule of law. We will choose and we will break down your homes. And we've only seen it in Israel actually. Right, the use uh, of... Uh, the, the use of the bulldozer and it seems almost that... So, so, uh, so the first and the biggest threat is this idea of uh, equal citizenship. Uh, for people of every faith and identity and caste, that is in you know is tearing apart, and that was really the foundation of the idea of India through the freedom struggle in the Constitution. But I must underline through a much older civilizational history uh, as well. 
So that is one threat, but that's not the only threat. Surrounding it is also the threat to, to freedom of thought and freedom of conscience, uh, into all our freedoms. In fact, uh, Roosevelt spoke about four freedoms, uh, the, uh, the freedom of conscience, uh, the freedom of worship, uh, the freedom from want and the freedom from fear. And, and, and uh, just, just by saying it, uh, you, you, you realize how much each of these fears, uh, or each of these um, freedoms are under, under such, such intense threat uh, today. Uh, there's fear everywhere. Uh, if you, uh, you see it in universities, uh, in the media, uh, you, you see it in, of course, in civil society. Any criticism uh, of the government, of, of its policies, of the whole ideological frame of this government uh, is now seen as a dangerous act. It has sort of hard consequences on even your survival. Uh, and uh, for some of us, the, the threat of, of, of being imprisoned uh, and charged with the gravest of crimes, the use of the enforcement directorate, the use of the UAPA law, uh, you know, and, and, and I think that you know this Republic Day. If I want to remember one person, it would be Father Stan Swami, who should have been a role model for all of us. And in in the circumstances, this man had had spent you know, decades of his life standing with India's poorest people. Uh, in, in, in Jharkhand, and he is imprisoned, not even given a sipper, he has Parkinson's, and he dies uh, uh, without any trial. Uh, so I think that, you know, the attack on India's minorities and its, you know, framework of secularism, the attack on India's, um, uh, in, on, on all our freedoms, and a third, which I'd still like to add, I mean, it's not, it's, that's why I find it so grim, is also uh, an attack which is more covert, uh, but it's very much there. It's an attack on India's working poor, especially on India's informal labor. What we did during the pandemic right. uh, to, you know, you, you have, you order uh, a countrywide lockdown with no relief uh, and support in a country where 9 out of 10 people are informal workers. And a sudden lockdown. And a sudden lockdown with no relief package. And, uh, and the devastation that it, 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 it wrought as well. So I, I see you know, the attack of the state on, on India's Muslim minorities, to some extent to its Christian minorities, the attack on, uh, on our freedoms and the attack on the working poor. That is why our, <laughs> This is, this is a Republic Day, a very somber Republic Day for me. You know, but it's also an attack which is, in a sense, becoming wider. We have, you know, top politicians ruling the country, talking about the basic structure of the constitution, almost as if it is just a technicality. Is, is it just a technicality? No, in fact, in fact, it is. I think that, that what is most severely an attack, and I probably should have said it, that when I talked about these three was, uh, uh, um, it is ultimately a war on our constitution itself. Uh, it is a war on, uh, on, uh, on what kind of you know, collective living in this country uh, we had promised ourselves, we the people of India, in the writing of our constitution. It is that that is most under threat today. And I see, uh, you know, to start with, we saw the Prime Minister paying some sort of formal obeisance to the Constitution, etc. But now it is, you know, it's, uh, it's being uh, chipped away. Uh, and, uh, you know, you want none of the checks and balances, an independent judiciary, an independent media, uh, 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 universities uh, as places where students have the right to uh, right to think, know, think and, and question and dissent and, and so on and uh, and, uh, and uh, civil society uh, which is you know which is where we, you know it, it, a vibrant self-confident country uh, should welcome uh, different voices, different thoughts, uh, different imaginations. Uh, 
uh, all of that, you know, we, Tagore wrote, uh, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, uh, where the world has not been broken up by narrow domestic walls. Again, just think of these four things that he, he wrote and think of our country today. Is the mind without fear? Is the head held high? Is knowledge free? You know, you're in the media, you tell me. And, uh, and where the world is so badly broken up by narrow domestic walls. You know, this reminds me again of the question of citizenship, which you just touched upon. Yeah. So who, in a, we are also discussing who is a citizen. Is it somebody who was born here? Is it somebody who can come from anywhere and become a citizen? Why yeah. is this question important today? You know, it is, it is uh, you know, in the circumstances, uh, uh, I was also born after independence. Uh, you were much younger than me. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, we... It's a time to remember the circumstances in, we got our, in which we got our freedom. Right. Uh, a million people had killed each other, were killing each other in the partition riots, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh. Um, the country had got torn apart, rivers of blood were flowing. And Pakistan had been constituted on the basis of, a, of religion. But we chose, and in fact, uh, this is one of my favorite pictures, uh, because the three men uh, who... Uh, uh, who at that time stood up and said, no, this, is, uh, this will not be a, a nation just for its Hindu majority. It will be a country of equal citizenship for all. And that idea is so precious. Uh, and that is what is, is just flying out. Uh, and, you know, I was spent some, um, almost a year in Germany, trying to look at Nazi Germany. And the similarities are, are are terrifying about what happened in the run-up to the Holocaust. Hannah Arendt, writing later, says, citizenship is ultimately the right to have rights. It's a very beautiful formulation. It is the right to have rights. We, we are fast moving into an India in which Muslims do not have the right to have rights. If I choose to, to bulldoze your house, I'll just do it. You know, uh, if, if I choose to charge you, I mean, a, 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 a journalist of Muslim identity is coming to uh, a report on the gang rape of a young Dalit girl and you'll put him in prison for, for years. So, so, so we, are, we are fast, very fast moving into a situation in which uh, we are consenting to a completely transformed Indian Republic. Uh, where the constitution is set aside and where some people, because of their religious identity, don't have the right to have rights. I want to ask you what you think people view of this republic. How do people, you think, consider the Indian Republic today? How far have we, we met our goals? How far we have not? You know, uh, again, I talked a little bit about Nazi right. Germany. You know, uh, I've learned that what I learned in that year was the horror of Nazi Germany was not Hitler primarily. It was ordinary people. It was uh, the huge support of ordinary people to the genocidal project uh, against Jews, against disabled people, against homosexual uh, men and so on. Uh, and against the Roma and Sinti gypsies. Uh, in India today, what is terrifying to me is the growing support for the project of hate. Uh, and, and, and I think that is what should trouble us most. Uh, how do we want our, our children? In what kind of... Do you want your child? You belong to the most privileged, upper caste, Hindu, uh, 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 rich family. Okay. Do, do you think your child uh, is going to be untouched by this climate of hate? I mean, uh, do you want your child to be hateful? Or do you want your child to be kind? That's a choice that we have to make. And we are, more and more of us are making the first choice. To and succumb to the pressure. To, yeah, we've seen a time when hatred and bigotry is not just seen as, as, as normal, mm -hmm. uh, it's seen as legitimate, but it's also seen as heroic. You know, you're the hero of the Hindu nation when you can spout the kind of hatred that we see from 
member of parliament Pragya Thakur, for instance. That is, she's proving how much she loves this nation and she loves her religion. That's not my idea of, or, or, you know, Gandhiji had taught us many things and one of the things was that no, it cannot be true religion when it is founded on the hatred of any other. Uh, it, it, he was a devout Hindu and therefore he respected every other faith. Mohan Hazad was a deeply devout Muslim and therefore he respected every other faith. So we're moving into, uh, uh, you know, into a situation where ordinary people are in growing numbers in all our family WhatsApp groups. Which of us, uh, all our school friend, uh, college friend, uh, uh, WhatsApp groups, when you see, uh, and I'm, I have my IS WhatsApp groups, mm -hmm. uh, 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 from which I've sort of you know, exited, when you see the kind of bigotry that is, that is, that is openly paraded uh, in rich and rich middle class Indians, uh, that is the horror of, of what is unfolding today. You know, there's also another aspect of the last 75 years, which is we spend so little as a country on education, on health. I have to mention education, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, what does that say about... Yeah, that's a, actually a much older, older failing. Uh, and uh, um, we... Uh, Amartya Sen put it very well, you know, he said that, that if you compare uh, India and, and China, in some ways they are equally unequal countries. But he said that the penalty, and it's a very fine formulation, he said the penalty of inequality is hugely more in India than it is in China. I belong to the bottom 10% in China. Mm -hmm. I will still my child will still have access to a decent government school and will still have a hospital where uh, she can be uh, uh, sent when she's sick. At the bottom 10%, the bottom 50, 60, 70%, we don't have that in India. We have one of the most privatized healthcare systems in the world. And during the lockdown, you know, it just hit me. Uh, did you, you know, uh, do you know what percentage of doctors in India, trained doctors in India work for private uh, private sector, 80%. 80 percent. And that is after a large number have already left for US and uh, those who leave left behind 80 percent work for for private corporate hospitals. What is the public system? If I'm, you know, in India today to be poor is a crime, but to be poor with a serious ailment is a crime that deserves capital punishment. You know, I, I, I tended my father and my mother through the last years. And, and I often used to think that the amount, because of their insurance and because of, uh, you know, what they could afford, uh, that's why they lived till late 80s and my father till the 90s. Absolutely. If, if they were an average Indian, there was no way they would have lived. We cannot tolerate in India, and I'm, I'm not talking about education, which is even, you know, you know, this idea of equal chances. With just, foreign universities yeah. coming in, and no, so, so, on. so we are just worried about this top layer, and and it's uh, we are getting. Uh, 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 Arundhati Roy somewhere said uh, that there's been only one successful secession movement in India, seceding, and that's this. Seceding of the middle class and rich Indian from the rest of India. We've created our own stratosphere. So, in a sense, you're saying that India has created structures which are contrary to the founding ideas. Absolutely. So, so you know, this top structure. So, they don't care what's happening in government schools because we have the private schools and we go abroad. We don't care if there's uh, sort of law and order problems, we have our own security. They don't care if there's pollution, we've created our own. They don't care if there's uh, no clean water, we've created our own. So, we built uh, a stratosphere of, of the wealthy who live lifestyles, access to the best hospital, um, schools, education, best I would say in inverted commas. Uh, and, and, and the rest are, are getting further and further left behind. So when we see us falling more and more in the global hunger index, it should create intense shame and introspection about where we are as a republic. 
But the trouble with you and I, the class to which we belong, is, is not the inequality of India, but our comfort with inequality. We don't care. We don't care. And I think that, that uh, we are going to be held, I mean, sometime in history, we will be seen as the most uncaring and cruel uh, people of privilege that perhaps are there anywhere in the world. Um, that's a very strong indictment. Um, you know, uh, is this what allows the state to sort of weaponize welfare instead of looking it, at it as a necessity? We look at it, often the government looks at it as something, you know, for example, the food drain scheme. Not only is it debated in the most crass terms, but it is also seen as the state having done its job. Yeah, no, and, and, and see what has, what has changed. We failed, over, especially over the last 30 years, with the whole neoliberal project. But with all the failings of, of the last government, the first steps were taken of recognizing rights, right. social rights, the right to education, the right to food and nutrition, the right to work through NREJ, these, and the right to information. These were very, very crucial uh, and hard uh, hard fought for all of these. Now what we are seeing is welfare as largest. Right. You know, आपकी दया मतलब जो राजा के महाराजा के दया से आपको वैक्सीनेशन मिल गया. Wow. महाराजा के वैक्सीनेशन से आपको पांच किलो अनाज मिल गया जब आप भूखे मर रहे हैं. मतलब you should be grateful to him for the rest of your life. Uh, and certainly you should vote for him. That's not a democracy. That's not, uh, uh, you know, this is the, the fundamental duty of a government is to ensure clean water, um, uh, food, nutrition, health care, sanitation for all citizens. And it should be politically punished if it doesn't do it. Right. And not that it hands it out like, uh, you know, like... Uh, uh, you know, like the rajas of old uh, uh, old times, uh, you know, to their subjects, okay, they've given. That is what welfare has been reduced. So we we were not a welfare state in 2014. We were very far from a welfare state. We were taking some initial steps in that direction, but today we are not. At, I mean, the idea of of welfare as right, as your right, uh, your right to have rights, is not there. For any of us. There was this song in a film <laughs> from your uh, generation, actually, or actually before your generation, maybe. Jine naaz hai hind Hind pe wo kaha hai. Was, was that song more valid then or now? It's, it's much more valid now because uh, when that song was written, uh, it was, yes, it was uh, the generation that just preceded me. It was still a time of idealism. It was a time when when you would say uh, uh, to Hindu banega ya Musliman banega main in, nahi main insan banunga that was the kind of idealism wo subha kabhi to aayegi and, and uh, we've lost I mean now you, you that idealism we, we can, um, we, we've got corroded uh, 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 a sense of hope for for a dream of an India where Muslims and Hindus and Sikhs and Christians would live together as sisters and brothers, uh, a dream of a country where the gap between the rich and poor would be smaller and smaller, the dream of a country where uh, you would have the freedom to, to walk with your head high and speak uh, what your heart and conscience tells you, or the dream of a country where uh, uh, where the state would take responsibility to ensure a basic life of dignity. All of that is lost. Uh, what we have instead is, is this idea, I mean, those of us in that stratosphere uh, that I just spoke about, we are having lifestyles that match or in, are far better than perhaps people anywhere in the world because we also have domestic help and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so that's an India we we become content with, and 
It's not Repub- a situation. Republic Day is a time when we need to think and, you know, I think India's Republic is at its darkest. Uh, uh, I want kindness, I want justice, I want freedom. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.